Um, you mentioned Springboard. Mm -hmm. uh, you were you received a call from President Clinton to be the chair of the National Women's Business Council, right. and from that sort of transition, can you tell us the mission of Springboard and why it's so important to you? Um, Springboard is uh, a nonprofit organization. Um, it's a very small organization. There are actually four full-time employees at Springboard. But let me go back to the beginning. When Clinton called me, President Clinton called me and asked me to be head of the Wim National Women's Business Council, it, it, it really, it was really to measure how many women's businesses got procurement contracts with the federal government. That was really, it, and it wasn't really interesting to me. Um, I'm like, think big. I, I like scale. I like big businesses. And, you know, it, that wasn't really the place for me in a lot of ways. But some friends of mine who were associated with it really encouraged me to, you know, think about it. And I thought about it. And, I, and then when he called me back, I said, you know, I really, I was very interested in how women could access capital, private equity capital, because that's where the big money is. And, um, you know, none of these women were running, you know, aeronautic companies or anything. Construction companies, yes, but not, you know, aviation, you know, they weren't Boeing, you know, they, you know, companies like that. And so I, I was, so I, was, I really wanted to find out really how can we get women more access to capital. And in, in just a little history here, back in 1998, 99, money was pouring pouring over the transom, totally different than when I started businesses, when there was none. This was so much money pouring into venture capital, into companies, over a hundred billion dollars in 1999. 1.7 percent went to women. And I wanted, I looked at that and I said, you know, I've, I've seen this movie and we have to have a different ending because women deserve to have equity in their companies. Too. And women deserve to have the opportunity to grow scalable companies, which is what I was interested in. Scalable companies, big companies. Uh, and uh, I wanted women to have an opportunity to do that. And so I thought, let's figure out why they're not there. And I found out that with 96% of the people in venture capital being men, their networks just didn't have the women in them. There are a lot of people from engineering, from chip manufacturing, you know, they're, they're you know, they're people that came up out of engineering, a lot of them. Um, and they just, their networks are just all guys. It wasn't that they were really rejecting women. They just never saw any. No, no one came and pitched them businesses. You know, that, that, that is kind of the truth. And I, I really went around and interviewed about 50 venture capitalists around the country and found out there was just a total disconnect. It wasn't a rejection. Just a, there wasn't any communication. And I really wanted to find out why. And that's you know, basically the general premise was that women really couldn't build scalable businesses. Now they could bake cookies and be Mrs. Fields. And hey, we all like to eat cookies, nothing wrong with cookies, but that wasn't a venture capital type business, you know. Uh, so <coughs> I said, Dan, I'm going to go. I liked results. I had three year to be, uh, three years, it was, a, you know, that's the term, it was to be the head of the National Women's um, Business Council. And I thought I could use it as a platform to find out if we could actually do something about this. So I called up some of my friends in Silicon Valley, and I was on the board of Oracle at the time. Um, and, well, Larry, that's a different story. Um, so anyway, I went to Silicon Valley and I got together some friends and you know called people together and said, look, I really want to find out if we can find any women who are building scalable businesses that venture capital would back. And I got a mixed result from men and women. Some of the women said, great, we'll help you find them. The other half of the women said, don't you dare. You're going to ruin it for us because you're going to bring in these companies and they aren't going to be strong enough and they're, you know, they're going to be laughed out of town. You're going to be run out of town and we're going to be, our careers are going to be in jeopardy. And these are women that were in the finance business. And so I thought, hmm, yin yang, yin yang. Uh, but I'm coming. Uh, I figured, what the heck? What have I got to lose? I at least had a platform. I had you know, some panache uh, in, uh, you know, in a sense, and I had some standing because of what I'd done, and I was going to use it, USA Network. I was going to use the platform to see if I could do anything about it. So I got a little committee together. There were about six or seven of us, and we, we put out a call for uh, applications 
for people to apply. And we just really were looking at Western United States. And we thought, I hope we get 100 applications so maybe we can find 10 companies or something to present in a venture capital form. I mean, I don't know if you all know how they go, but you know, it's like you get your 10 minutes on stage and you sit in a room and you present to a room full of venture capitalists and if they like what you have to say, they'll talk to you afterwards. And if they don't, they won't. So it's a little bit like the gong show. <laughs> and um, so a week before we were going to have this cutoff date, we only had 50 applications and we were like getting really nervous. Final date came, typical, 350 applications came across the transom. And we thought, oh my God, now what do we do? We got the business school from Berkeley and from Stanford. We got students who are in the MBA program and we had them sift and winnow through these things and cut it down to like 150 and then we cut it down again. And finally we wound up with uh, 26 companies and they presented on January 27, 2000 at the Oracle Conference Center. And they had been trained by us about what venture capital is because if you, you have to know what they're looking for. They want to invest in your company, they want equity in it, they want to know what your company's going to do, who's the management, what's the competition, what is the opportunity, when, they're going to, when you're going to sell it and how much money they're going to make and when is that going to be. Um, that's basically what they want to know. Um, and so you have to teach that a little bit. And so we got up on stage and I really felt like it was showtime. I, I really felt like it's showtime. These women are going to, I'm going to see if they make, if we can make a dent in this impression that women can't, can or cannot build business. And I loved Krishna. Krishna was the first woman to present. We chose her. She had a software company. Um, we chose her. She's um, Krishna Submarinian, her name is. And she got up on the stage and she, she didn't know yet whether her software was going to be for business or for consumers. So she got up on the stage and she said, to be, to be or not, that is the <laughs> question. And it was kind of like, you know, it was a good start uh, for, uh, and we're off and running, the 26 companies presented. 22 got funded. No kidding. 22 got funded. Two companies merged their business. One woman sold her company and one company was not funded. And boom. We're out of the box. And, and 60 days later, the tech market collapsed. And I said to my little team, last in, first out, not this time, not on my watch. We're not going to have these women washed out of the marketplace. And we went on. We gave a, we did a presentation. We did a venture capital uh, forum in Washington, D.C. at AOL, as a matter of fact. Um, in uh, that summer and we went on to Boston in that fall and in the 10 years since then we've seen about 5,000 companies we've presented 445 companies those companies have raised 5.5 .5 billion dollars in capital 83 percent of the companies that we presented raised money we put them through boot camp we train them we give them coaches you know and we prepare them to, to present their companies um, Eighty percent are in business today over ten years. Um, we're on our eighth IPO, which is Zipcar. Mm -hmm. iRobot um, is, you know, something that you may know for the Roomba. Constant Contact, you may know what that is, is an email marketer. Um, uh, four of them are biotech companies. Our very first company was 51 Job of China. It is today the biggest, it's a monster.com of China. Uh, it's a very big company. All these companies are listed on the NASDAQ. And interestingly, that, uh, that uh, I think is interesting, just this year, the biotech companies, the, science, the life sciences companies, which are biotech, devices, diagnostic, a little bit of clean tech and green tech, uh, became the number one category, uh, surpassing our technology group by one. 145 companies in, in biotech and life sciences, 144 in straight technology, the rest in media and uh, some assorted other businesses. But anyway, what a track it's, record. Um, there is no track record to match it. And uh, I think that, you know, we're going on, we're doing many more, th we're doing more, we're doing another media sector section this year um, and another life science section this year. And we're also doing a venture capital forum in Israel. 
So uh, it's, you know, growing. This is our second one for Israel. We had 10 Israeli companies two years ago, and they just wanting us to come back and do another one. So it's really great, and it's not to say I don't love guys and I don't want to help guys, but, you know, still 93% of the venture capital money, that's men. So we're up to 7% for women, and I hope to get up to... Our goal is, by the way, to um, have, uh, by 2020, to have have our companies to have presented a thousand companies and to have raised uh, over $20 billion for these companies and to have over 100,000 employees by these companies. Today we have about uh, close to 20,000 employees uh, for these companies. So we're job creating as well as everything else. So, you know, it's uh, K. Koplovitz 2.0, I guess. <laughs> <laughs>